Why did I choose Hass? Avocado. Why not mango? Why not peaches? Why not uh, dragon, dragon fruit? fruit? It's not attacked by insects because it doesn't have sugar. So you are talking to markets that are very sensitive about chemicals these days. This tree, when you produce it, the only thing you are busy about is the day you'll put manure. After that, there is no hassle. Should people be scared of it being, you know, the market being oversaturated? If you look at the population for India alone, they have not touched avocado as a, as a food. Chinese, with all the sushi they eat with avocado, they have not grown avocado. They are not growing. And all those are now asking, they are demanding for avocado. So it's become a consumer thing mm. that everybody is eating every day in their diet. I don't see a time where will be saturated, fully saturated. This is not a game of numbers. It is a game of kilos. How many kilos is this tree giving you? How much dollars are in a kilo of an, a house avocado? So uh, for a 4 kg, because the standard unit is 4 kg. Yeah. So you will probably fetch, send for, sell it for between 6.5 to 8 mm -hmm. on the on the season like this where it's low, but it can go up to 12 when it's soft season. Yes. At what point will it give you a harper? So you remember, harvest after how Remember long? it is one year old. Yes, already. already. So when you come, it stays another one year. Good. So the second year from when it is in your hands, mm. you start harvesting. Wow. So trust the process. One day your life is going to change. Keep on believing. You will be better than before, so trust the pros. guys welcome to today's episode of inspire global my name is lynn googie and you see what i'm holding yes the long awaited conversation on has avocado is finally here and guys i'm happy to be having this conversation with one incredible woman uh, grace at karakuta farm here in kiambu because she will be talking to us about everything we need to know about has avocado including how to plant it, where the market is, the do's and don'ts. And also we get to understand, is the money good? And I know a lot of people are into Haas Avocado. So please watch this video so that you get to understand how to do it right. We are about to get into that conversation. But you know, above all, I have to say thank you so much to the partners who make this conversation happen. Our people at Optiven, Asante Nisana for coming through and you know we've been talking about Optiven and their property in Ocean View Ridge in Vipingo and I love the feedback that I'm getting from you. So guys if you are looking into owning a land talk to my people at Optiven and ask them what do they have for you at Akama si huko Vipingo wakona vitu mingi sana across the country and of course if you are watching this from Diaspora and you want to send money to your loved one here back at home through M-Pesa or even a bank account uh, try my people at tap tap uh, and i always say please make sure you download the uh, app uh, so that you can be able to send money and get 10 percent cash back uh, if you use my promo code lean on the figures on your screen and you know what we say here on inspire global guys it's time for you to get your notebook out and your pen because at inspire global we insist uh, no matter what your hustle is uh, please be proud of of it there is absolutely no shame in hard work so let's learn what we gotta learn today about has avocados and also to appreciate you guys one million subscribers here we come our people in australia here we come so continue supporting us because it can only get it can only get better to kazi has avocado guys let's take our notebooks our pens and learn what we gotta learn what we gotta learn hi mom Hello. How are you? Fine, thank you. Thank you so much yes. for giving us this opportunity 
to be able to discuss a very beautiful topic with you. But maybe for the people who are just tuning in, could you introduce yourself and tell us what you do? Okay, thank you very much, Lynn, for coming to our farm, Karakuta Fresh Produce. We are very honored. So my name is Grace Mudoni Ngongi uh, Karanja, married to Mr. Lawrence Karanja. I'm a farmer now, uh, but I started my profession in the corporate world where I worked as a sales person in the Pfizer pharmaceutical industries. Mm -hmm. And then I moved to the donor agencies, development world. Yes. And uh, my responsibility there, which inspired what I do now, was to develop partnerships. Okay. So I worked with ILO and I worked most recently with the USAID program, mm -hmm. which was called the Kenya Youth Employment and Skills Program. Okay. So in 2017, uh, after being very tired of working, Lynn, I don't know whether you've worked before. Yes, I've worked before. There comes before. a time when you feel you want to do your own thing, you want to shape your own destiny. And uh, I didn't really know whether it was going to work or not, but I took what you call a step of faith. And I stopped working and uh, set up a farm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I knew for sure I wanted to do agriculture. I've grown up in a agriculture background in a, fami a farming family and uh, where I'm married uh, it's a very uh, a very strong farming family so I knew the resources that I have would actually propel me more to agriculture or agribusiness mm -hmm. so that is why I started the avocado orchard in 2018 when I felt that now I could not take even one more day at my workplace. Okay. Yes. Can I ask you something? Yes. Because it's always a scary place to be. Yeah. That part where you know I need to quit and start something else. Yes. How do you get to that point where you are like, no matter what happens, no matter how scared I am, I'm going to take a leap of faith. Lynn, that happens, it's like salvation. When it happens, you're hundred percent it's you know that thing is they say kufa kupona yeah. or kufa derefa kufa makana. <laughs> that is the stage you get into. Because you are so sure, you know, it doesn't start just once. It starts it's it's a process that comes over a period of time. Mm -hmm. And everything just gives you more reassurance. And what you need to do at that point in time, just like you're told, when you want to get saved, you start now flocking with the people who are as in salvation. Yes. Now it's the same thing. I started now looking out at success stories. Who's done it and it was worked. Because I knew it I had no other way. It had to work. I didn't have like flats Plan that I, I that I was going to get into. I, I don't have any other source of income. Uh yes, my husband is uh, able to support the family, but at, at least we had to have something that we're doing that is contributing to the income. Mm -hmm. So I knew for sure it is something I've got to do and it has to work. Okay. I did my homework. But you see the calling started coming in slowly and that going out to seek for knowledge because that is what helps you make the decision. Mm -hmm. Seeking the knowledge and looking at examples of something that is similar to this. That helped me a lot. Okay. And so I was comfortable to actually now take the leap of faith. Mm. Now, the most shocking thing I'll tell you is that every money I've ever put aside, I spent it all here. All your savings? All my savings. And the best reassurance I had, because I had faith that it's going to work. I had seen that it has worked with other people. So why not me? What I was very sure about is that if any challenge comes in, I'll not go and say, ah, it's okay, let me give it a break and go back to plan B. This was plan A. It had to work. There was no other way. Mm. So I put all the money here without turning back. That has helped me push on. Okay. Because I made it work. Knowing you only have one plan. Exactly. And one plan only. Within a very short time. Okay. It had to give me resources in the shortest time possible. All right. And hence the choice of the avocado and the herbs. So I, I mentioned before that we are doing avocados and we are doing herbs. That was the reason why I had to do So I knew I had three years to sacrifice and then start reaping from that. The return on investment was equally short. 
So that is why I chose to do the Hass avocados. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. We are going to come to Hass avocado yes. because as I was telling you yeah. off camera, mm -hmm. I've really wanted to have this conversation and not just have this conversation, but have this conversation with the right person. Yes. You are taking us around the farm. You are talking even about the seedling. You are talking about the cloning. And I was like, this is so much knowledge. Yeah. But we'll come to that because one of the things everyone is talking about is Hass avocado. And the reason I really wanted to do this show is to educate people yeah. because there is also a yeah. lot of uh, regrets with some of the people who have done has avocado and also finding out you are doing herbs, you have basil. Muga was really excited about basil for his mojito. All those things will come to that. But talk to me about the withdrawal. Do you ever suffer from withdrawal because you've resigned from one job and what you are starting might not give you back the money that you used to earn? How did you deal with those withdrawals and also the stress of knowing, oh my God, this is where I am. This is the risk I chose. Because I think for me, it was very depressing. The first year of quitting and starting something, I, I, I think I was so depressed. Okay. How, how did you tackle yours, your emotions? So on the contrary, mine was exciting. Oh, it was very exciting because uh, you know the uh, is it the anxiety or the adrenaline? Yes, I had adrenaline. I was on an overdrive for three years. Let me tell you, you're in a corporate world and you're in high heels and suits and having corporate meetings, and you're coming straight into gumboots and structured and planned. That was a very challenging thing. But one gift I have is of structuring. I know how to structure things and to build. I'm a builder. I can actually start things from zero. <clears throat> Maybe the reason why I was very good at structuring partnerships, so I'm able to know and leverage on my ability to build partnerships and know if I put Lynn here and I put, say, Steve here and I put uh, Natalie here, I can be able to come up with a big thing. Mm -hmm. So that adrenaline helped me move forward. I was looking at the bigger picture and also I was very sure the bigger picture is going to work. Now, the most important thing you need to know about all this is that we are in the era where most farmers have got knowledge, which is very different from the previous days of our parents. For me, when I went out, before I even put my first tree on the ground, I went to Berlin, Berlin Fruit Logistica. Fruit Logistica, you have more than 5,000 uh, visitors coming as buyers or sellers or, I mean, the whole world that is in farming meets in Berlin mm. in February. And I spoke to buyers because I had shortlisted people I hear are very big. Now I'm very small, but I'm going to sell a vision. And you should have seen me posing and talking to them very big English about house avocado and production. And I have no tree, not even one. But you know what I wanted to know? Is this thing real? Is it real? And if it is, what makes it real? When I understood that and I picked up my suitcase and came back home, mm -hmm. the only thing I told my friends in High Hills is bye bye. See you. I'm mm -hmm. going to be a farmer. Yes. And everybody laughed about it. Lean everybody to date. They will tell you the story. They were shocked. Like, are you crazy? And I told them I've gone. I'm going to be a farmer. Three years, nobody noticed. It's three years and nobody knew they had missed me because it's a very short time. But in three years, when they saw my first container leaving because I posted it everywhere, I was very excited. In just three years, they said, it's a lie. We are coming to see you're lying. And they came and see, saw these trees. These are the trees I planted in 2017. Mm -hmm. In three years, they had already given me fruits. Wow. And I was exporting. But three years is a very short time. So the information that I gathered when I was talking to the buyers, the information that I gathered when I was talking to people who predict and forecast markets and growth, I knew this is not a quail and I knew it's not a business that is going to collapse the next day because they, all the facts, the fact that I went seeking for information mm. was very, very important. It helped me make decisions and it gave me the certainty that I can actually go and set it up okay. and I can leave the other world and fit very comfortably into this world that I was forming, mm. new networks that were very exciting. And I decided I'm not going to talk to these other guys because they'll be there. You know those frogs that when you go to drink water, they're like, oh, if you'll fail, yes. you'll collapse. You'll see it's another quail. 
I decided I would not interact with that. I wanted to interact with the people who have done it and it has succeeded. So that ecosystem I formed has helped me. And it's the ecosystem I enjoy and continue working with. Mm. You see, like yourselves now. Yes. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah. So you've gone to Berlin. Yes. You are armed with information. Yes. You are coming back to Kenya. What did you find out about Haas Avocado? Or number one, what is Haas Avocado? Okay. The market will tell you about avocados. First, avocado is a fruit. Why has it been rated as a superfood? It is rated as a superfood because it has got healthy fats. Healthy fats that are very good for the heart. Yes. Yeah? So everywhere in the world, everybody is told you must take an avocado at least a day for your own health. That is the most important thing. Then you go into the differentiation, which avocado? Because there are many avocados. Mm. There is fuerte, there is has. The reason why the has variety is rated highest among the avocados is because has has got the highest healthy fats. Yeah? And it's creamier. So it gives you the cream. So it's pleasant to eat. It's mm. very nice to eat. And it's got good fat content. As opposed to fuete or the lamb has and the others. Yeah? Okay. So even the people who process oil prefer to use has avocado. Mm. The ones who are eating it for fruit, they prefer to use has avocado. Yeah. So you have two benefits for that. The oil producers who will buy your fruits that you can't export will want has. Mm -hmm. The ones who are buying for fruits will want has. So that is why it is highly rated. Okay. Yes. All right. So yeah. now, yeah. umekuja umesema, mm -hmm. I'm doing has, right? Yes. Let's start from the planting yes. part. Okay. How do you, so take us through yeah. this here. Yeah. Before it gives us this. Yes. And now before we even have this tree. Okay. Where do we start? Okay. And what formula of planting okay. do we use? Okay. And also what are some of the mistakes yeah. you also made yeah. in the process? Okay. So um, just before we get into uh, the process of getting the fruit that yes. you're putting into the market, perhaps it is also very important that we mention why did I choose Haas? Good. Why did I choose Haas? Avocado. Why not mango? Why not peaches? Why not uh, dragon, dragon fruits? Fruit. Yeah. Now, the reason why I chose Haas is I mentioned that there was a lot, there's a lot of studies that has been done already by big companies that are, have invested millions of shillings in the Haas. There's an organization, a world organization that only does forecasting for Haas. Mm. And I was very certain about the stability of the market of the food because people are continuing to eat it globally. So what at the, what percentage are we, we are minimal? We have hardly touched the surface. Then when you look at Mexico, Peru, they are producing and their market mainly, they're growing, but they're having challenges. They're having challenges because of the water issues, the labor issues and all that. So the next, as the demand continues to grow, global demand, Mexico, Peru may not be able to sustain that. Mm -hmm. So there has to be another major source of the fruit. And that major source of the fruit will be Africa. Because we don't need the amount of water Peru will need. Peru is already draining its water resources because of the avocado plantation. But we have enough rains here. So we don't need that kind of water that Peru would need. Yes. So we will be the other source of avocado fruits for the global market. Mm. So that was important. Now, secondly, more farmers are bec more consumers are becoming very conscious about what they eat. When you go to mangoes, mangoes have a challenge because diabetic people cannot eat that. The people who are looking at health are not eating that. Why? Because it's got a very high sugar content. Wow. Yeah. So you see, avocado, when you have diabetes, you're told you eat avocado. Yeah. It's the only fruit you can eat. When you go on diet, your dietitian will tell you the only fruit you can eat is an avocado. Oh, yes. Because everything else has got sugar. Avocado does not have sugar. Plus the healthy benefits of the avocado. Mm -hmm. Everybody is eating it because of they have no choice. They have to eat it for the health benefits. Okay. It's not attacked by insects because it doesn't have sugar. So you are talking to markets that are very sensitive about chemicals these days. I told you we are growing organically because we can afford to. The only measures we take is to make sure we have enough traps for any pests that may decide to attack. Mm. But unless new pests that are changing their diet, avocados don't get, they're not prone to pests. Really? So you can comfortably grow them. When you're doing large orchards like this, you can comfortably grow them without spray. 
you can comfortably grow them organically. Mm -hmm. So that was the other thing. So there was the demand when, and because I'm looking at scale, I want to do big, large quantities, and there was also easy to produce. This tree, when you produce it, the only thing you are busy about is the day you'll put manure. Wow. After that, you have put your traps to make sure you deter the insects. Mm -hmm. From there, there are, there's some foliars that you need to apply, but minimally. As long as the soil has got good organic matter, there is no hassle. So, weeding here, unaweka mbuzi ndani. Mbuzi ndiyo zinatembea uku, zinakula hii nyasi. I am never here. In fact, I don't remember the last time I came here. That is as simple as it is. But if you look at mangoes, for example, mangoes you have to put a lot of sprays because they are fruit fries, they have what, because the sugar attracts a lot of, mm -hmm. yeah. And so you can't export mangoes. In Kenya, we don't export mangoes to Europe because we spray a lot because of the insects, yeah? So that was a challenge. So when you're looking at doing large business, large scale, then you cannot do it with mangoes for now, mm -hmm. unless you're looking at the Dubai market. That is the reason why I chose this one. Okay. Yes. Beautiful. So number one, Yes. ask yourself, answer your why. Yes. And make sure your why makes sense. Yes. And I, not just any sense, but business sense. Business sense. Uh -huh. Because this was being done not as a hobby, it was a business. So I was looking at my return on investment, which means I have to have scale. Yeah. Secondly, I'm looking at what clients am I serving and what do they like. Mm -hmm. Then they, that means you have to have us. That is what they eat. Then how do you grow it? That's the next question. How do you grow it? These clients don't just want us. They want us in a certain shape. They want us in a certain size. They want us grown with a certain way. So the global gap issues come in. And that was the process now that we started implementing. Yes. And so you start with the market and work backwards to start meeting. And you, you don't work the other way where you plant and then you start going to the market because you find you've done the wrong things. This way you go to the market, get the information. That is what an informed farmer does and work backwards mm. and deliver to that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah. Next question. Yes. You already so said. So the next question, how, how did we plan? Mm. Lean, you know what you call the good, the bad and the ugly? Yeah. That is what we had here. Oh. Because we had nobody to tell us. So what I know now, I didn't know then. One biggest problem was the seedlings. I had one clever person who came and told me, let's set up this. You need 10,000, 30,000 seedlings. We are setting it up. And I thought, clever idea. And we set up a nursery. That was the first worst mistake I made. First worst mistake. Doing a nursery is its own business. A whole business. Because one, the seedling has to be grown a certain way. Now I know. Then I did not. So we had a total flop of the nursery. We had about 30,000 seedlings. We only occurred or when we transplanted because now they started dying. By the time they're six months, they're dying because overwatering. The guy who is running the nursery is not a professional. So they're dying. So we panicked and we said, okay, fine, let's do this. Let's plant what we have. We quickly went and planted premature babies. They were this size. You put them on the ground like this, they get a coma and die. That's it. And that was it. So we savage a bit, but half of the other avocados we had to buy. It is the time that we were told about a very good nursery in Kenya because we did not actually know there is a commercial nursery. You know, nurseries that just do seedlings professionally for orchards, Yeah, we didn't know they existed. So I visited a farm actually in Nakuru. And I asked them, what is this seedling? And I mean, why is it so looking so nice? You just planted it and now it's looking like it's already grown. One year old seedlings. And I was told where the source was. So I went to Isinya and I bought my seedlings. And from there, I've never looked back. So the seedling that you plant would determine what kind of orchard you're setting up here. Mm. Because in that place, they, you are sure that they have the right zions you are sure they have the right, the right rootstock. Mm -hmm. Every farmer who comes to tell me their story, that is, there is nobody, 99.9% .9 have gone through this experience. They are bought nursery seedlings in the nursery on the roadside and they are dying. Of course they are dying because they are premature. 
These are babies that are supposed to be in ICU. Uh -huh. But the professional nurseries will not sell you anything that is not one year old. A one year old tree with an established root system. Remember, the roots are the stomach. So if it has a small stomach, how do you expect it to come? You put it on the ground and to start eating. Mm -hmm. Will it eat? Mm -mm. It will just either go what you, or what you call dormancy. Dormancy means it shuts and it stops growing for a year. And secondly, it will die. If it finds now, I can't even cope. I don't have energy to grow. Because growing will require energy. Energy will need you to eat to produce energy to grow. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have that. So the seedling, your source of seedling will determine how fast you fast track your journey. Now remember I mentioned that I wanted in the third year I am earning. I have no source of income. I have workers here. I have to pay them. So I needed the shortest route possible. The reason I'm telling you the, the seedlings were the worst mistake is because when we set up the second orchard with the seedlings that we bought from Isinia Roses that were one year, by the second year on the ground, they were producing fruits. Wow. So that shortened my journey, yeah, to production. Mm -hmm. So you economically people tell me, no, but this roadside one is 80 bob. It is 80 bob because it's three months old. You take it, then you have to take care of it on the ground and it is a game of patapotea. You don't know whether it will grow or not grow. Then you miss a season. So time for me is very important. It is not even actually how much I bought it for. The time that I lost, that one year that I have to wait for the next April, wow. the next rainy season, to plant the next one. Because mm. I don't want to buy a one-year-old seedling, which is 400 bob, which somebody invested and took care of and charge me only 400 shillings for me to put it on the ground and use only one year to have it and it is giving me fruit. Good. So that was very important. That was the first lesson. Mm -hmm. With all due respect to the nurseries on the roadsides, yes, I respect them, but there's a way they should actually give the farmers the right seedlings. And this is about education. Don't give premature seedlings that are one year, one month and convince the farmer that to go and plant. But if it is a hobby of pata potea, you plant tomorrow, then to, you don't know whether it will survive or not, then you can take risk. Mm. But if you are certain that it has to be planted this month, because next year we have projections for it to produce, then you have to be sure about the seedlings. Mm -hmm. Another mistake we made, we planted them in holes like banana. Because Mkachimba. the agriculture and officer came and told us to dig a grave and put it in a grave. When you see the seedling where it is, it is surely a grave. Then avocados don't like water. So we lost another half from the way we had planted. These ones are planted on a hill so that the drainage is good because their roots are very sensitive to excessive water. Mm -hmm. So we lost more. Third, we planted here. We have a river down here. We did, know that, we did not know that there are delicacy of swaras. Oh. The swaras love those purple leaves that are just sprouting. We lost another crop. So say zero. We are now at zero. So the next year is when we started doing it professionally. Mm -hmm. Those lessons, nobody was there to tell us that. Okay. Even the agriculture officer told us to do in a hole. Because he does not know. The books in Nigaton, for example, they don't teach about avocado. They were taught how to do coffee. Tea. The, and tea and what and bananas and that is the methodology they use there's something else they also taught us about spacing they told us to space very very wide and like you see here. in one acre then in one acre your production per acre is 100 and almost 20 trees but when you go to farms where they're doing intense if you look at our other block our other blocks we've even done a five by five tree to tree four tree to tree four and then this way you do higher six because of mechanization. So you are, we have places where we have 220 trees in one acre as opposed to 120 trees in one acre. Who will get their money quickly? The one with more. So when you're looking at intensity, when you're looking at orchards, and when you're saying you're not doing anything else in that farm, I will live in Maindi, Ama Maragwe, then you go for intensity. So you get your money quickly. Mm. There are so many theories and discussions, but Lynn, let me tell you, especially about spacing. I've gone to Spain 
I have gone to South Africa to see how they do it. In orchards, they look at intensity. They don't look at high spacing. High spacing is advice where you are doing intercropping mm -hmm. with other crops. Yes. So that was the other mistake. big, big, big mistake that we made. Other than that, uh, the, f the first year, we had a bumper crop. Beautiful crop. Everything was having 300, 200. And then we tried to get into the market. Guess what? We had small sizes. Oh. <clears throat> because we did not know how to feed the crop. And I mentioned before, this is not a game of numbers. It's not politics. It is a game of kilos. How many kilos is this tree giving you? So the sizes will be determined by how well you feed and when you feed. Just to give an analo analogy, analogy mm -hmm. that is uh, understandable. When a woman goes to labor, yeah? When you're expecting, say, after, after you give birth, there's a certain food, unapikiwa sana, sindio? Because you've depleted all your minerals, your energy, you want everything. So you have to be pikiwa to, to go back to, to be able to produce better. It's the same thing with the tree. After the season, why do you think the tree sheds the leaves? Because it is so tired. It's taken all the nutrients from the ground to take care of the babies. So at that point, it is the most busiest time for us in September, October. We are very busy. Nobody talks to the other. Making sure that this has got a lot of manure. Because we are organic, we use a lot of manure. Mm -hmm. So that's when we feed a lot. That's when we prune to make sure we don't have excessive trees so that we leave the trees, only the strong trees that can hold the babies. Secondly, the when is very important. The when. If you put that manure after, or if you put, it will not help. So you need to cook for the tree to get back shape. Because at, in October is when then it starts to flower. Mm. So it is now going through preparing itself to get babies, to become pregnant again. So the flowers, the quality of the flowers will determine how many fruits you'll have. Because if they are not good quality, then they shed. Hmm. What you hear farmers saying, miti yangu in our boat. In our boat, kwanini, the tree is like a human being. The moment it feels, ah, I have too many babies and I can't take care of them, in angusha. So it starts with in angusha maua kidogo, in abakisha what it thinks. Then it gets now, yes. pollination happens. Then it has the fruits. Then it feels, hey, these babies are still too many. I still don't have enough food. In Angusha babies. Yeah? So the babies will continue falling, continue falling, until the tree is comfortable. That it can sustain the kids that it has. Yeah. Then it needs to eat. It needs to eat enough now to make the babies bigger and fatter. Mm -hmm. So there is what we give in the beginning to make sure that pollination happens well. The flowering happens well. The pollination happens well. Yeah. There is the time for now making the fruits fatter. Like this time, we are focusing a lot on making the fruits fatter. So we give it a lot of feeding at this time to make the fruits fatter. Mm. Yeah. So there is organic fertilizer that we give that is focusing on fattening the fruit. Yeah. There is organic fertilizer that we give that is focusing on retaining the flowers. Wow. Yeah. And at the time that you give, not always that you see the flowers then you give. The flower, for example, the one for retaining the flowers, you give it when it is budding, not when the flower has opened. Mm. By that time, it's already opened, you know? So that's the type of the flower has already happened. So that was very, very important. So those are the lessons that we continue to gather in terms of uh, now we've known how to grow and we've grown. How do we now bring our levels of quality higher and higher so that we're now meeting the market demands? Okay. Uh, I mentioned that uh, we talked a lot to customers. Europe, Europe only takes big fruits. So you're talking from size 12. You know how we measure fruits? No. Okay. In a 4 kg is the standard unit for avocados. And the number of fruits that fit in the 4 kg box, I wish I had a box I would show you. Mm -hmm. The number of fruits that will fit in a 4 kg box determine the size of that fruit. So how many fruits are in this box? If they are 12, then that fruit is size 12. If they are 24, that fruit is size 24. Yes. You get. So if they are 12, that means they are very big. Only 12 fitted in a 4 kg box. Yeah. So they are very big fruits. 
So the Europe market takes big sizes only. Mm. Chinese markets take small sizes only. So you choose. Europe pays better and they are more um, secure in terms of uh, uh, customer relationships and that. They are more straightforward. China is a market we are exploring. We sold a lot to China last year, but we made a business decision not to sell to China this year. Mm. And in fact, I don't think there's any Kenyan company that is selling to China this year. Mm. The government has decided to hold it yeah. because of the experiences that we had. I'm not saying it's a bad market. But I'm just saying it's a new market. And there are a lot of experience. things that uh, all of us who are exported and need to learn. And so mm. we need to know how do we streamline, which is normal when you're starting mm -hmm. opening a market. Yeah. So those are some of the key lessons that okay. we learned. Yeah. So when you harvested the small size, yes. where did you take the avocados? <laughs> we sold them to the, okay, we sold them to the exporters, uh, local exporters. Uh, at that time, we did not know how to export, so we were not very keen about exporting. Mm. But it doesn't matter. Even if you sell to the local exporters, you get more money when you sell a bigger fruit than when you sell a smaller fruit. A smaller fruit. fruit eh? Yeah. Yes. And, and, and that's mm -hmm. when we learned the lesson. That's when they came and told us, Hey, and I'm like, but ah. they're fruits, you know, they're okay, okay? They are fine. They, they said, no, 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 no. They are small. They're small, and the price for small fruits is different from big fruits. Okay. Yeah. And the climate, you mentioned avocados don't like water. Yes. So which is the most favorable climate to plant yeah. a house avocado? A discussion that we've had many, many, like I said, this is a very new market, and we're trying to understand it for yeah. our country. Well, uh, they say that high altitude is better from 1500 about uh so that's what you do then upwards mm -hmm. so that means the low altitude 600s you cannot uh, below sea level uh, is not good but when you go to spain in malaga which is the andalusia district mm -hmm. that produces avocado they're at sea level so i ask people how come this one's you yes. know it's about studies it's about our agriculture departments doing mm -hmm. their studies eh? because the, in spain uh, andalusia is all at sea level and that's where you grow the avocados in spain that's the region for avocados mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so i don't know yeah whether it is true or not but traditionally we've been told it is the areas where you grow coffee the coffee zones and the coffee zones most of them will be from 1200 upwards it's something that we are experimenting on and uh we are setting up actually some production in uh, voi uh a small area that about 200 acres mm -hmm. mainly to see how they'll perform there i know there's someone else who set up something in Shim Sh shiba hills yes we are trying to study how it works so once that is done then we'll know but you i really don't know yeah the agriculture people need to tell us okay yeah the, now let me ask there were some seedlings you were showing us that yes. have been cloned yes first can you explain that okay okay um Yes, this is also what you call um, informed farming, yeah? yeah? Informed farming. Okay. Now, as we grow, we are learning. And as we learn, we are applying. Because I told you this is, we are in this for the long haul, yeah? Yes. It's not short term. Yeah. Now, this is the best. Actually, you could say we have the best in Kenya seedlings, yeah? Because I, I could comfortably say without fear that Isinia Roses has got one of the best is senior roses is senior nurseries they mm. call them nursery in terms of professionalism because i've told you i have gone around they have got the most uh, i could say the most credible seedling so far mm -hmm. that i've seen there could be others but i'm saying so far that i've seen it is the best why they grow for one year secondly they have farms where you know where the zions have come from third they grow in big pots, yeah? And they don't grow in soil. They grow it in pumice and cocoa peat and other different types of media. Mm -hmm. When you grow in your soil and you bring me the chafu or ugojo from your farm to my farm, already I am challenged. And that means that tree could be having any condition. So I bought for you 300 shillings and then later I put it there. It had a disease, it kufas. You've eaten my money yes. and you've lost my time, yeah? yeah? So Isinia Roses was. Now, then after we traveled a lot and met a lot of people, we met a company called Broca Viveros. Because Spanish people and Mexican people told us, do you know where Kenya is? You're 30 years where we were. 
And I asked them why. They told me the, the, the type of seedling you do is what my father used to do. And because we cut, you don't know where the root stock is. This root stock is supposed to be different. You don't know where it is. Anyway, our methodology, you really can't trace it. The word is tracing. You can't trace it. So we went to Spain. Uh, we met this guy, company called Brocal Viveros. And what they do is that they clone. Why is the cloning very important? We know that in Africa, the best performing rootstock, which is the tree that has to be in the bottom, because it is the African tree that is adaptable. That means it can stay for 100 years on the ground without getting sick or falling off. Mm -hmm. It's called the Dusa. Dusa. Yeah. There's Dusa and there's Duke. Those two, they are the main ones that are very important to be on the ground. Now, when people tell you we are transplanting, yeah, did you, to me, to me, I can't you know the nurseries, you know how they talk, eh? Eh, to me, I can love to graft Zion in the house. I can't you know, Kisi, the Kenyaji is purple. Ukienda Meru, where I come from, the Kenyaji is yellow. When you come to Machakos, the Kenyaji is another type. So even the Kenyaji are many different ones. So which one is the best? According to, even when you go to people like the, the big multinationals that are doing avocados, they know the Kenyaji that they plant. Is they don't just plant at all Kenyajis. Even when you go to Isinia Roses, they buy the fruit. Mm. They buy the fruit they want, they come, they ripen the fruits there, and they germinate that. So they are very sure, the rootstock, Kenyajia or Nigani, one eco sure. Mm. Yeah? Now, our clone of seedlings, they clone the rootstock. So all the roots, all the seedlings that you see there, the 3,000 seedlings, the, the rootstock is cloned. It is one, they remove the seed and make it more. Mm. Secondly, the Zion is also cloned. They have picked the most productive tree they've ever seen and multiplied it. What's a Zion? I'm asking for someone because in avocado <laughs> yes. there's a lot of Zion, Zion. What's yes. a Zion? Not in avocado, you know, yeah. fruit farming. Yeah? Mm -hmm. It's the hybrid of the, the variety of the hybrid. Okay. If you plant the hybrid directly, it will, it will grow, yes. Somebody always asks me, if I take this house and plant it, will it grow? Yes, it will grow. But remember, it is not African. So it's not adaptable mm. to this climate. So you can get sick. It might not live the hundred years there are trees live. It might not, it, it will get shocks. But if you take the traditional one, and it's the same technology that you have with the animals, yeah? When you want to inseminate, you bring the hybrid, you put it on the local boran, cow, isn't it? Yes. Because the cow itself, but when it is in a tzanin, you hybrid. But mm -hmm. the host, the carrier, is the local person. Okay. You get Good. The carrier. So the local is the duke, that is the dusa that I'm telling you, the mm. traditional kienyeji. Di unakuja na sasa na hybrid, unayekelea ju, to be carried by this. So mm. what you see on top here is the hybrid. But what down, you see there, down there, it is the Kenyeji tree. Now what I am not sure about, in this orchard especially, I Kenyeji, Kama is the same. Nai. Kama I, ama ile. Ama ile. Yes. We don't know. So you might see this one is a very active tree. And this is a lazy tree. If you talk to most farmers, they'll tell you, they call me, they tell me, Mitiangu in a flower at different times. This branch has flowered, that branch has not flowered. This one has got teenagers that the clonal gives you homogeneity. So it will give you the same size of fruit. It will give you the same quantity of fruits, almost the same. It will flower the same time. So it is very easy for you to give projections to your client mm. and tell them this year we are doing 15 tons or 20 containers. That's very easy to do with the clonal. Good. With these ones, in Akwanga to estimate, because they behave very differently. Mm. Yeah. So now that one, you have yes. great hopes in that great one. Great hopes. Yeah. Now, most important, with these ones, you do 15 tons a hectare. With those ones, you do 30. Double. So you're doubling your production. You're doubling your production. So even for smallholder farmers, when we're able to set it up nicely and get the uh, the, the seedlings available to farmers. Mm -hmm. For smallholder farmer, you don't need very large land. 
You just need a few trees and you're sorted. And you're good to go. And you're good to go. Let's talk about timelines. Huh? Yes. For that seedling, for me now to come and put it on the ground. First, we've established you are not digging a grave yes. to put it there. <laughs> yes. So, uh, distance, unafau dig distance two in a kaje. Two. two and two. Two and two. No, 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 ajali. Two yes. and two. Good. Yes. Yeah. So, that seedling, you are supposed to take it from there. If you are how old? One year. One year. One year. Put it on your ground yes. on a two by two. Yes. And then it will flower, of course. Yes. So at what point will it give you e harper? So you remember, harvest after how Remember long? it is one year old. Yes. Already. Already. So when you come, it stays another one year. Good. Yeah? Yes. The third year. You get? Yes. Not the third year from. So the second year from when it is in your hands, mm. you start harvesting. Wow. It may not give you the volumes that you're looking for, but it is start, and because it will start giving you fruit. 50, 100, it will start giving you fruit. Mm -hmm. By the second year in your farm. You get Good. Yeah, because it's come, it's already one year. Yes. So you, you are only with it, nurturing it for two years. The one who bought at the roadside, first, ata ujuka mayake ilimea ama ikumea. Sindio? Labda ilipotea. Sindio? Because it is, then it is, they all go into dormancy. So by the time that tree gives you the first flash, you're almost talking a year. Me, I'm already moved one year. Yes. By the time that tree, I'm okay, okay, now let me try and give you fruits. That tree would take four, three to four years. Mine would take two good years and I'm in production. Yes. So I always ask people, what maths do you do? Explain to me the maths you do. And that you're saving what? That 300 shillings. Because you want to buy a cut tree for 60 bob, which you don't know when it will ever recover or give you fruits or whether mm. it will work or not. Mm. I don't have time. Lynn, you can see, I just want to get my money quickly back. <laughs> and I don't want to, and I enjoy that money when I can still dance. Hey, yeah? mom! I don't want to start getting money when I am buying Old, for yes. hypertension. And arthritis. No, I have to have it for fun, yeah? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Hiya. We've done our first harvest. Yes. In a year, yeah. how many times can I harvest? We do two. Okay. We do two seasons. We have two seasons, just like coffee. We have the high season, which is April, May, June, July. Mm -hmm. That's our high season. Okay. Then we sit, and then we come to the second season, which is October, November. That's when we, we get the... the it is called the off-season crop, mm, mm, the off-season crop. Mm -hmm. But our main focus is in the high season. All right. Yeah. So you can do two harvests you can do in two a year, harvest. high season yeah, and, and a low and a low, low season. season. Yes, yeah. Where we, low season, you probably get a third of what you get in the high season. You get a third, just a third, not so much, but a third. Okay. But the high season is is good. It's yeah. good. Yeah. Now after we harvest, yes. where are we taking the avocados? Okay. Where is the market okay. at? Where is the money at? <laughs> All right. Ah, yeah. There is two types of buyers. Yeah. This is where the numbers work. Yeah? Uh -huh. Now, you have the buyer you call Marigiti. Hey. Yeah. Uh, first, there are two markets. There is the Europe market, which is a good market. Although even there, you can get good and bad. Mm -hmm. There's a Europe market and there's the Dubai market. Dubai market is price sensitive. And they're not quality sensitive. Oh, okay. So anything you want to take to Dubai, you can take. They don't care about standards, they don't care about price, the, the price sensitive, they don't care about quality. Hey. Yeah. Europe is very sensitive about standards. Mm -hmm. They're very sensitive about sizes. They're, so and they and also uh, global gaps and all those things, yeah. So those are two markets. Now in Europe also, you'll get the Marigiti guy and you'll get the retailer. Now when you're talking to the retailer, now you're smiling. But when you talk to the retailer, that's the person who buys to sell to retailers, to supermarkets. Mm. There are standards that you must have. Number one, Global Gap. He wants to make sure that you have Global Gap certificate. That means they've come here, they've audited you, and they've agreed that you used good agriculture practices. Right? It's not cheap yes. to have a Global Gap. And you must adhere to the systems. So what chemicals do you use if you use chemicals? Because the kunazile zawa me ban. Europe is not, they don't joke. Mm. What chemicals do you use? How do you grow? What are social standards? There is also an, an additional. You must have social standards called smeta or, or what's grasp. Mm -hmm. To confirm that you don't use child labor, like the challenges Mexico is having right now and all those things. To confirm that uh, you don't use unethical practices, 
shortcuts and all those things yeah. like uh what you saw sorry to refer to this like some of the farms that you've seen that mm. they were killing people because of something like that mm -hmm. but they are very strict about that because one issue can make their business go under one issue associated with your farm then it is traced like you are one of their suppliers they quickly mitigate the issue and say we've deristed grace very quickly yes. we don't even know our second name so they have to make sure you're very ethical now you have to have those standards to move to the level mm. supplying to those guys that i'm telling you about but it's a very safe space to be in when you give them volume you have set up an orchard then you have put up standards then there's something you're promising buyers that is very very important that you can give them quality and consistency yes yeah so that is what we've been able to do mm. we've been able to assure them they come they visit they see it's a farm it does not mean we don't work without growers we work without growers and when we work without growers we help them produce like us okay and our buyers know that i am lean is my outgrower so when i send him i tell him i have 300 crates for lean in that container they know it is for lean mm. and she grows like us yes she's in our database so that's also very important mm -hmm. So we go to market, we tell people, we do a lot of marketing exhibitions, I was telling you, to make sure people know, hi guys, we are Karakuta Fresh Produce, we are large scale, medium to large scale, that means we can give you what you're looking for, quality and consistency. Mm. On top of that, to make you comfortable, we have Global Gap and Smeta, so we are growing it the way you want when you do that, leave the good. rest. They oh. will be falling on your feet. Good. Yeah. And a kilo will give you like how much dollar? How how much dollars are in a kilo of an, a house avocado? So uh, for a four kg, because that's the standard unit is four kg. Yeah. So you will probably fetch send for sell it for between six point five to eight mm -hmm. on the on the season like this where it's low, but it can go up to twelve when it's soft season. Yes. You see October. July, July, August, September, October, mm. it can go up to 12. Mm. Yeah. So the money is good. The money is not the bad. Returns yes, good. The returns are good. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Higher. Turudi Hapakwa, there is something we have here. Yes. We have a few crops here. Yes. And we've said, Hazikulangui na sana, but i mekuliwa na nini. Okay. Now, when you ask about challenges for yes. this industry, yeah? mm. one of the biggest challenges is water. Because if you don't have good water system, that means you can't get the size of fruit that yeah. you're looking for. Yeah. And remember we said this is a game of not numbers, but cages. Cages. So you must have water. Because if you're not, not having water, you'll not be able to feed it. Yeah. Yeah. So we have set up irrigation. Everything is on irrigation. Oh, so everything this is, is sprinkle, irrigated. sprinkle. No, you can't. You can't. So <laughs> everything is on drip lines. Yes. Yeah? So water is key. Water is very key. Secondly, there's a new, this is a new phenomenon. I told you even insects change diet. E insect in it was FCM. It may badilisha diet. It never used to eat avocado. Sasa imeanza kukula avocado. Mbaka hata insects wa mejua avocado is a superfood. <laughs> so they're eating. Wow. So what they do when the avocado is fruit, when it is pin size and it's got a soft skin, they pierce, lay eggs, and then they exit. But when it pierces, then that's why it gets this marks. Now you cannot export this. It's like a pimple. It is a pimple. And you see a fruit like that one now. This this is the max. Mm. Now this, you can only sell it to the local, oil, local people mm. or the oil industry. Can can and, and the challenge with that mm. is that, uh, again, so what do we do here? We put traps. We have a lot of traps in this farm because we don't spray. So we are more preventive than reactive. Mm. So we have put traps for FCM and there is a, the other one called uh, fruit fry. Mm -hmm. There's a fruit fry that also does that. And the traps attract them and finish them at early stages. I told you this is a game of the when. When do you put them? At flowering. The moment you start seeing the flowering, that's when you're getting the pin size to, to fruits to natuka. That's when these guys attack mm. and, they, and they eat this one. Mm -hmm, yeah? mm -hmm. So this is sorted out by yes by the traps the traps we are lucky 
we are not uh, having a lot of neighboring farms. So for the farmers who have many two farms around them, then there are products like one called from South Africa called Last Core, where it's like a toothpaste you put on the trees mm. and it also repels. Okay. Yeah. It repels. All right. So that those are the two major issues I've mm. seen. Yes. Of uh, water and the the FCM. Mm. Yeah. Nahi. In a now, car this shade is, this is this is sunburn. Yes. Sunburn. This is sunburn. Oh dear. Uh, sun. Yes. Sunburn. And um, I have seen in farms where it's very very it's very rare for mm -hmm. us, and. Um, you see that it is usually on the places where it's the, it's very exposed to the sun, yeah? yes. like you can see there. Yeah. But it's not very common because the trees are very vegetative, mm -hmm. and so they they, they 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 nurture, they hide the, yeah. Mm. But in places where it is very hot, I have seen they spray uh, calcium. Uh, they spray on the tree, the fruits. Mm -hmm to cover them okay. a white, you'll see white powderish yeah to cover them and protect them from the sun all right yeah now we have different colors here yes how do you know mm -hmm. this is the right one to send to the market okay actually as uh, interestingly enough yeah? yes you see these fruits i'm holding here? yeah this is a this is a good good size mm. yeah in shape it is pear shape right yes if you look at this fruit it is oval. Hey. Most of the fruits that are sent from Kenya are this ship. Oval. Do you know what this is? It's lack of boron. Huh. That is what causes this. I did not know until I had to experiment. So when we took our soils for tests, we were told increase your boron. Your soils don't have boron. And when we increased, we started having more of the pear ships. Yes. Yeah. Now, the European market likes pear. They don't like oval. That's another thing, mm -hmm. okay? So you must attain this, and this is about boron. Now, secondly, when do you know? You remember just a few years ago, Kenya was blacklisted in the market as uh, having bad fruits. So every buyer we talk to, they tell us, we don't buy Kenya fruits. We don't buy Kenya fruits. Everybody, you almost wanted to cry. And I asked them, do you buy fruits from Kakuzi? Yeah, they're my neighbors. So if Kakuzi can give you fruits, and I can give you fruits like Kakuzi, will you buy? They said yes. But it's because we were sending fruits that are immature. Mm. Because people buy what you call, they call themselves exporters. They go to the smallholder farmer. The smallholder farmer is desperate for money to pay school fees. He will quickly, he'll quickly tell you, harvest what you can. Him, he doesn't care. He will send to a European market a fruit that is this color. Mm. Where is that color? Yeah. There is this color. Now this fruit will not ripen. You can see the difference. Yes. This fruit will not ripen. This fruit will ripen. So HCDA, which is the authority that is controlling this on, in the horticulture, has been regulating the harvest seasons. So that by the time people are harvesting, the seasons are mature. Mm. The fruits generally mm. in the market mm. are mature. Okay. And that has helped a lot because the perception has changed. And so you find that now, even when you go to talk to buyers, the narrative has changed from last year and last year but one. They're saying the quality is improving. The quality from Kenya is improving. The advantage of that is that it's going to put us in the map mm. as a good source good. for avocados. That's good. Eh? That's very important. Yes. Yeah. So nobody should tell you, oh, no, you're not. Well, this will be quail. There will be oversaturation. Yeah, I wanted no. to ask that because right now there is the fear of everyone is doing has avocado, has avocado, this is quail. People are even chopping their coffee trees to plant has yes. avocados. Yeah. Should people be scared of it being, you know, the market being oversaturated. If you look at the population for India alone, India, they have not touched avocado as a, as a food. Ah. Uh, Chinese, with all the sushi they eat with avocado, they have not grown avocado. They are not growing. And all those are now asking, they are demanding for avocado. Every sushi you eat has got avocado, mm. right? Now, if you put those two markets together alone, yeah, the demand will be very high. And it will continue to rise. You want to tell me to be sustained by Mexico alone? Mm. And more and more people are putting avocado in their diet. These days, even when you sit in any restaurant, salads have got avocado. Your side plate has got avocado. So it's become a consumer thing mm. that everybody is eating every day in their diet. I don't see a time where will be saturated, fully saturated. 
Remember avocado is the same one that is also being sold for, for cosmetics. The same avocado, right? So this fruit is needed for oil. The watu wa mafuta wanapigania avocado because most people prefer to export the fruit. Mm. So by the time oil is getting, they, nobody will tell you they do 30% of their orders. Yes. They do less than 30. So the demand, in my opinion, is very high. Mm. Yes, it's a commodity. One day it will get to a place where it is too much. But the issue of quality is what is going to be the main differentiator. More and more people will be looking for people who are producing quality, just like anything else. Mm. Yeah. And the production cost, because we've spoken about the prof maybe the how much yes. a kilo can, co like how much the four kgs will go for. Yeah. But the production cost and the labor intensity is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, have you seen any person here? No. There is not. The only thing you might have seen is goats. Yes. Sheep. The sheep. Yes. And the security because it is the high season. So they steal. But in the hubs, you saw that we have over 22 people. Yes. Here, there is nobody. Only when we are harvesting, we outsource the labor. Because in these areas where there is a high avocado production, a lot of youth have been trained on picking. Mm. So we don't need to have harvesters here. Wow. When we are harvesting, we have a guy we outsource to who has got his team of jeshi. They come, they harvest. We tell them to nataka muvune mbaka size 22. Wanakuvunia mbaka size 22. Wanatoka wanaenda unawalipa. Mbaka the next harvesting day. Mm. Kujeni tena muhavest mbaka size 22. Ivo. So with this one, the water feeds itself. The manure is only when we put manure in October. After that we sit and monitor. Wow. So it's not labor intensive. Orchards are not labor intensive. Mm. And cost of production when you're planting, yes. Yes. You are taking care of the tree. After the tree establishes itself, That's the it. manure after the season. Mm. In other places where you're not growing organically, obviously the intensity is during the flowering season. Mm -hmm. During Only during that flowering because that's a woman who is now pregnant. You yeah. know, yeah. That's the time you're now pumping with a lot of uh, iron, uh, you're giving a lot of boron, you're giving a lot of calcium because you want her to take care of the babies and to give you strong babies. Yes. That's the only time. But there is no intensity in terms of a high cost of production or, or Labor, labor intensity. intensity. No. Wow. No. Yeah. You, it's good you've mentioned herbs. Yes. We also know you have something else beautiful going on. Eh? But now let me ask you, ma'am, because you said we only do like two seasons, yeah. right? So when you don't have avocados and you need to give avocados to your people in Europe, unatoa wapi sasa? Okay. First, nimekuambia tuna farmers that we work with. Yes. Outgrowers. Mm -hmm. And... Um, they're in our database, our buyers know them mm -hmm. by name, mm -hmm. by farm. Uh, Oracle helped us to map them. Yeah. And so when we do the sticker for traceability, we are able to trace right to the farm the name of the person. I have a special love for women. Yes. Because you know this is an area where there's a lot of alcoholism and a lot of widows, therefore. So we have, there is no homestead in Kiambu that does not have an avocado tree. And not just a tree, as a source of livelihood. Mm. And so I help a lot. I help the farmers to access better markets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that you don't have to be desperate to sell your fruits to a broker because you needed school fees. We facilitate, including helping you access money, the money you needed for school fees. We may help you access it so that you don't sell your fruits immature. Mm. Yeah. So we have a program that we are working with smallholder farmers Beautiful. to make sure that the smallholder farmers remain relevant. Remember the dynamics of this industry is going to change. Yeah? We have a lot of big boys now growing avocados but 99% of the avocados and what has shaped the history of the avocado fruit in Kenya is the smallholder farmer. All this story you've had Kenya being in the map, being the fifth largest, the third largest mm. it's been the smallholder farmers. The big boys set up in the last three, four years. So they'll start rolling out in another two years. You start hearing everybody is shifting to buy from the big boys, mm. you know them, yeah? And what will happen is that it's very possible the smallholder farmer can become irrelevant because nobody will want to talk to them. Yes. But it's not a must they become irrelevant. If they also produce like a large-scale farmer and get attached to a large-scale farmer mm. and they're able to deliver this because it's not magical, it, they can do it. They, they have cows and goats. It's just the manure they need to put there. 
when they deliver this and they're in a program like the, like the one that we have, they are also you, you're also able to transport them to there. Yes. Now we also go off season. One of the things we've been able to tell our, to, to, one of the things we promised our buyer is that we'll give them fruits throughout the year because we have also set up in Tanzania. Oh. So Karakuta is also in Tanzania. Hey. So when we're not buying here from the smallholder farmers, when we're not producing here from our farms here, we are producing in Tanzania and we are also buying from smallholder farmers mm. in Tanzania. So we are all year round. And that really excites our buyers. Beautiful. Yeah. So even in Tanzania, to Kona Karakuta. Mukona Karakuta. Tanzania. Uh -huh. Yes. That's beautiful. Yes. I'm happy for you. Thank that's you. that's amazing. Yeah. But in all these ways, the government support. Would you say the government is actually supporting you? Yes, the government has been very helpful lately. Mm -hmm. Lately. Lately. Because uh, you see, like uh, there is a task force that was formed last last just two weeks ago, uh, through the DP's office. And uh, they're looking at all the issues that we have in the sector. Mm -hmm. Secondly, HCDA has been very helpful in managing uh, the kind of fruits that is exported. As much as people fight that idea of close and open, close and open, I support it because it is helping us self-regulate. Mm. And until we are at the point where we can self-regulate like the flower sector does, yes. because they are mature, they are more mature than we are. Mm. Then the government intervention has to be at play. To kifika mali to nasema now we are mature enough. Okay, let let's not export a fruit that looks like this. Then that time you can tell the government to step aside. But for now, we have to be mm. tapward, biboko, mingi sana mm. until we know who is this exporter. Do they have their skin in it? Yes. Do they care about the industry? Do I or, or is it somebody who is a briefcase guy? That today, when they kill the industry, they'll go and sell tomatoes or mm. they'll go and sell nyanyas, mm. I mean uh, onions or something else. Mm -hmm. That Those are some of the things that the government is looking at and streamlining. Yes. And that's very critical. And that's beautiful. Yeah. Yes. Of course, there are challenges. Yes. And one of the challenges, you know, you spoke about the swara, but also insecurity. Yes. How do you deal with that? First, do you encounter it? Yes, 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 yes. Actually, I should have mentioned it as the key. Yeah. Those ones were when we were planting. Now, the biggest threat is those guys who come at night to Vuna. Do you know why the smallholder farmers are selling? They call me every day at night and tell me, just come and harvest whatever you're harvesting. I don't care. I don't want the fruits in my compound. Because we are not safe. And these guys are coming every day. to Nalala But even in the household, they can. You see this side of the fence of the land, which yeah. is bordering the, the, the smallholder farmers? It's fenced. Because we have a lot of insecurity. They come in bags, with bags at night. And let me tell you, you'll see them here. Not that they'll run. They will go to this other side and continue harvesting. So you run this side, they run the others. Until they fill the bags and tomorrow they'll be back. So insecurity is a very, very major issue. Mm. And what is perpetrating this insecurity is those people I call briefcase exporters. Because if there is no market, these people will not be harvesting. Yes. So they come, they sell, they somewhere they go to sell to a certain person. person at night who comes to collect in pickups. And that person is then going to sell it to the exporters. With coffee, if you're caught with coffee, you cannot sell it because they'll ask you where is your coffee from. Because mm -hmm. it's regulated. Where will you sell it to? The same thing with tea. If I harvest tea now and I don't have a number, even if I go to KTDA, and my, I know my acres is 50 acres and my capacity is 10 tons. If I go with 20 tons, the last year in Guinea, I'm 10. Um, um, up, um, up. Um, so those sectors are regulated. Our sectors are not regulated. So you, anybody can go and sell fruits and nobody will ask them where are they from. So there are those people who have created that market. Mm. Now, here, there's the, the people. We track those guys and we go and look for the person they sold to. Those are the people we should be catching. And asking them, why are you encouraging this sector? Because mm. they're the ones. Remember this farmer, this guy who is harvested in a sack. They have no time to go to the pack house. To sell to a pack house. It is only one sack. He just wants 300 shillings for kikombe. Isn't it? Yes. So there is that buyer that you will come to sell to. 20 people will come to sell to. He fills his pickup and he goes. Mm. Those are the guys who are encouraged. Wow. So that is the major issue. A huge challenge yeah, yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah. Ah.
but we have the solution. And those are the things I told you, the task force is addressing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, we have formed an association, uh, Avocado Exporters Association, that is, uh, I'm a director in the association in mm -hmm. charge of marketing. Mm -hmm. And together we are working now very closely with the government. We have formed the task force and the task force is going to address all those issues that we've talked about. Good. Yeah. And also now moving on yeah. from uh, avocado, yes. has avocado. Yes. Why, why, why do you think people really love you guys? You know, why is it that people say Karakuta has, Karakuta has? Yeah. Why do you think people really vouch for you when it comes to has? Okay. Okay. This is a commodity. Let me ask you a question, Lynn. Uh, why do you go to a certain petrol station and not another one? I'm Good. sure there's one you like. You Experience. Like. And unapita tu na unona uko zero, lakini unaenda kule. Ata kiosk. Exactly. Yes. It is, so, it is a commodity. It is has, it is has, yes. But there are so many things that go into branding commodities. Like your, like your petrol station. You'll go there because of the kind of people you find there and how they serve you and all those things. Mm -hmm. Now, we have built relationships with clients. When we promise them consistency, when we promise them quality, that's our brand. Our brand is, we, when we tell you we'll give you size 22, or size 12. We'll give you 22 and 12. And it will ripen. Because we've made sure we're not greedy. We're not in a hurry to sell this type of fruit. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. We're not in a hurry to sell it. Or to send it just taka taka. Mm. We have promised you that our fruits will ripen. When they get to you, the dry matter, which is the one that measures the maturity of the fruit, will be 22. Mm. I will not collect my fruits. At the same time, I go to Meru in the highlands, Zuko. And I collect fruits because they have a different maturity level. When I'm selling fruits from this ecological zone, I will sell from only this ecological zone because they are at the same maturity. Mm. So that consistency in the promise is what has made us differentiate our fruits. Good. Karakuta. Karakuta. What we deliver mm. and the people we work with. So that's very important. Good. Yeah. Oh, I almost forgot. What do you do with the waste? Like now we've said this one will never ripen. So what do you do with it once you harvest them? Okay. Okay, this, if this, um, for example, yeah, that will not be harvested. If yes. they harvest that, I will not be, they're not, I will eat them. So alive. they leave them on the tree? They leave them on the tree and give them time to mature. All oh. this you're seeing here, they will be their time. Oh. Like now, kumenyesha hii mvua, zinakunyo hii mvua, zinakula matunda, by June, July, we'll be selling this as size 12. Okay. Yeah? Okay. If you have by mistake a cut like this one, yes. this goes to the oil market. Mm. Yeah? So this goes to the oil market. So nothing will go to waste here. Wow. I met a buyer recently who told me that they're interested in making paste that is used for guacamole. Hey! So now, next year, we'll not be selling only this. Even when you get one that has got just a slight, not a cut, yes, but it's got a slight, you see, um, let me show you, a fruit like this one. You see this? Yeah. Just because it has got this skin deformity. It's not penetrated inside. But just this, the export market doesn't want it. So there's a client who has now been taking this as second cut, second grade, they're calling it second grade, for guacamole. But in the future, we're looking at making paste. Yes. Already there's one company in Kenya doing paste. Wow. You can imagine, you're moving from selling all this weight mm. into a paste that is ready for consumer use. Beautiful. Secondly, there's no bahati sharing. You know the way you cut avocado you find is in mm, Simuzuri. Because you're interested to, black, yes, black. yes, exactly. Now, in the paste, for guacamole, the people who use guacamole a lot, they'll be getting straight the correct thing. Yes. So, we want to do paste one day. We want to do oil. Because when we process, we have waste. Yes. That waste, we have to look for people to buy the waste for oil mm. but when we set up our own processing plant here because we are going to do it next year beautiful we'll be sending this fruit for export market the one that has got this this just a slight deformity like this yeah goes for guacamole to our client yes and then the one that has got a cut like this one goes to the oil guys mm. to our oil 
to our oil. So everything will be will new. Will be new. Yes. yes. Congratulations. Thank That's you. a good move. Yes, yes. I hope we'll be here once you open yes. that company, yes. your processing plant. Yes, yes. But apart from that, we went and we saw some beautiful herbs today. Yes. You have some nice greenhouses with nice herbs. Hey, ma'am, you are a businesswoman for sure. And you know, for me, finding out Basil gives you good money. Yeah. Also, I felt like, let's touch on the herbs, Kidogo. Did you have passion first for the herbs as well? And what are you keeping, Uko? Okay. I had no idea what herbs is. <laughs> <laughs> this one is just a story of uh, the passion for the farming and making sure that you have a business model yeah. that you want to succeed. Yes. Now, Lynn, I, when I put all this, uh, my son asked me, do you realize you've put all your money here and you have no other source of income? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, okay, you better start thinking because we know you like to have good time. Yeah. Start, <laughs> start thinking. And I'm like, okay. Then I started wondering, should we do tomatoes and uh, the normal and onions? You know, the normal Kenyan yes. stuff. Then I remembered, oh, Tanzania is in the market. There's a flood. Tomatoes are out of market. Plus, kuibiwa. Nini, nini. So somebody, by the grace of God, met me and told me, I think you can do herbs. And I was like, what is herbs? And so I was sent to a very big farm that was doing herbs. Fresh herbs. And when I went there and I saw the greenhouses, and I said, good God. Where are you bringing me here? <laughs> and they told me, no, 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 no. Actually, we just wanted you to see that it in scale. Yes. Let's go and show you smallholder farmers of your level who are doing the same things. Sijuiz in the wapi. Sijuiz in the wapi. I can't even eat them if I can't sell. So I was saying, this is not even zukuma. I can't eat if I can't sell. Nani peleke kinalin, kinanan. Yeah. Nikambua pana wa ngoja. Information is so important. Same thing. Dio mimi uyo. Nikaenda Berlin. And I sat with Nikona Babs, buyers, nini, nini. I went to one, two, three farms that is very small scale, very neat farms. I understood the intricacies and I said, wow, not bad. This I can do. So I went to Berlin. I listened to the hub buyers and they told me this and that and that. I came back and implemented. Now, fresh hubs, that is basil, chives, oregano, tarragon, thyme, mint. Rosemary. And things we know. <laughs> But we really have never thought about them commercially. So basil is what we grow because our climate allows us to grow basil. When you're looking at the herbs market, there are two main pullers. You have chives as the main puller. That grows in the cold regions. And you have basil as the second puller. It grows in the hot regions. Those two are best grown in greenhouses. Best grown in greenhouses. Mm -hmm. Some people are trying to experiment to grow them out, but you have to have very subtle... Uh, cold weathers that are not the our sun is too much yeah um, and again one of the ways to measure the quality of basil is how crispy it is softness yes. you know so i learned about them i learned about the buyers and i came and did, and I did production and that is actually the main puller of this farm wow. it sustains us because it has got the longer season and it comes in season when they interchange when this one is in the market, it's season for a market, the herbs is just exiting. Mm. Because we grow the herbs in the winter for them. And then April now is now getting to spring. Yeah. So we are reducing herbs production. And we are now very busy with the avocados. So that means my workers work throughout the year. Unlike other farms that grow herbs, they lay off in this time. Yes. They start sending people home. And then re-employ again in October. For us, we don't need to do that. My young people, my girls, are employed throughout the year. Because they're either here or there. Or there. Yeah. And they've been taught how to navigate and the, both yes. avocados and the herbs. Exactly. Huh? Both yes. avocado and herbs. Yeah. So the, uh, we are growing basil. We are growing uh, or tarragon, tarragon, which is also very good and very expensive. Although it's not taken in very large volumes, but it's expensive. Mm -hmm. We are growing thyme. Uh, we are growing uh, rosemary. We are going oregano and uh, we are going to increase ravage and sage. Wow. That is uh, the ones that we are going to increase production okay. on. And yeah. one of the things you are telling me is that Kenyans, we take the herbs when dry. Yes. We shouldn't. Yes. Kenyans eat dried herbs because 
You see, this is an acquired taste. It's like the way people have started taking cheese. Yes. Yeah. We didn't know about cheese. Even these herbs. To the Jew to Dania. Now that's the same class. That's the Na same mint. class. Do we know mint? In a rosemary. Even mint is, is new. Yeah, it's new. But uh, uh, but Dania uh, is something that every Kenyan knows. Yeah? yeah. Because Dania is used a lot by the Indians. And the Indian culture has infiltrated a lot into our culture. Yes. But fresh herbs, also others, in the same category. Mm. Too. Basil, ni fresh herbs. Okay. Dania, ni fresh herbs. Coriander. Do you know we export coriander? You saw the section, the other one? Yes. We're, we're doing... We now in the high season we'll be doing five tons oh. of coriander uh -huh. per week. Five tons of coriander to the UK per week. That's also exported. My mom came and saw the rosemary and said, "Are these the things I wish I could tell you in Kimero? Are these the things we grow as a fence?" I tell her, "Me, I make money." <laughs> You know, <laughs> they grow it as a fence. <laughs> you know, these are no, the things, no. things. Bless, like, bless our yes, many people. Yes. Say it, say it, say it. <laughs> you know, you know when you say things, are the things you grow. I told her, me, I exported. She could not believe it. She has, she had to go to the park house to see yeah. that people are actually packing it, putting it in very nice packages. And it's going abroad. Uh, he went, she went home to tell people, you know, Grace grows those things as, <laughs> and she's exporting them. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. So yeah. it's a new market it's, also for it's people. It's a new market. Yes. So even for us, when you start seeing people are making mojitos mm. with mint, that's new. Good. People are roasting meat now. Yes. Anywhere you go, people are roasting meat, they're marinating. Yeah. Before we used to do meat, ta, ta, ta. in a toka. Yes. Now we are starting to understand herbs. Rosemary tea. Yes. People are taking Dying. a lot of rosemary tea. In Morocco, the most popular tea is not the tea that we take of majani. Mm. It's tea from from uh, rosemary. Yeah. It's very popular. They buy a lot of that. Yes. Thyme tea. Yeah. Yeah. It's, so it's, all these things are new and mm. it's acquired. Just the, the demand is growing, but not enough. Not enough for us to sell locally. Oh. Even when I have excess after grading, I would rather compost. Then start looking for Carrefour to buy for me 400 mm. kilos. Mm. Oh, wait, wait. It's more than the what I'll get from, you know. <laughs> is the money good though? Yeah. Like the, the money is yes. good in herbs? The herbs, the herbs money is good. The mm. season is longer. Mm. You're almost getting double of what you get from the avocados. avocado. Yes. So I told you the herbs is what sustains this farm. This farm. And you're producing it on a smaller space than you are doing the avocados. Yeah. yeah. Ah, beautiful. Yes. You know, one of our... Uh, wapi Salimo? Kujo usalimie watu wapa? <laughs> this is Salimo, and Salimo is wearing something beautiful. Agriculture made attractive. Yes. She has a company, as I was telling you, it's called Agri Tours. Yes. And she told me to ask you this question. Yes. Where is the future for young people, the future and opportunities for young people in agribusiness? Okay. Eh, Salimiana. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Where are okay. the job opportunities? Okay. okay. Yeah. When you're looking at the hubs, I think I've seen a lot of attraction for the young people. Mm. Because you're talking, it's not tedious, it's not dirty, it's uh, also got better returns. Yes. And you know, you people, your generation, you think smart. Yeah. As we think hard. You know, they want very quick. Am I making money like now? I is in, 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 and I showed you some of the things that uh, yeah. Moses is doing in the greenhouses. Yeah. So you can imagine from that space alone how much money he earns. Mm. And you're talking to buyers who are informed. So you want to not go to Marigiti. Mm -hmm. You want to talk to somebody who is buying hubs in Europe. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. it's, it gives you a sense of purpose. Mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. compared to when you have to go to Waru's and then you have to be in Marigiti at 4 a.m. and all that. Mm -hmm. So that's smart farming, okay. in my opinion. Yeah. And um, secondly, for these other sectors, services, the mm -hmm. services that you provide. Yes. I told you the person who does the harvesting of this path mm -hmm. is called Kangede. Yes. I don't even, I just called him and told him, cash on in attacker <laughs> size up to 22. He has his own group of mm -hmm. farmers that he has trained, not farmers, young mm -hmm. men, yeah. that he has trained and they come in, sometimes when I'm going up, like 300 of them, mm -hmm. they harvest and they move from farm to farm, okay. farm to farm, providing services. Mm -hmm. Then there's somebody else who approached me the other day and they were telling me about doing drone. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what is it called? Spraying. Sh yes. yes. Spraying. Yes. Now, why should I have my kettle and my people all the time in the morning, yeah. the whole night with my palms? <laughs> you know, and I told them, come, we discuss. Because if they can come and they're out, yes. I don't mind that. Yes. I'm saving costs and all that, yeah? 
So that services, the services that you provide, including the training, the learning, the training capacity building. Mm. Ian, you met Ian. Yes. Ian is doing a lot of issues on food safety. Mm. And uh, every time we are having a global gap certification, yeah. because they come and interview your people. Mm. They don't want to think that it's Grace who knows. They want to see it's a culture yeah. in the organization. And that means if they turn around and just meet that watchman you saw walking here, yes. and he's asked about food safety issues, he understands. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of also training that is mm. offered by young people. Mm -hmm. Yeah in terms of certification and taking us through the process of certification. Yes. All that the people provide that I see are here, the young people. Beautiful. There's a lot of opportunities. Yes. In the production, in the markets, I see even the people who are now aggregating hubs mm -hmm. and sending are young people. They are the ones who are forming these companies of now I have Grace, she has access, so and so access, and they are aggregating, sending to the market. Mm. Why? Because they are more adaptable. Yeah. You can easily come out of here and go to Italy, talk to a client, and they'll listen to you more than they'll listen to me. For me, they say, mm. you are even tired. Why are you saying you will supply me? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> With avocado, oh, first yeah. of all. Mm. But you, you go, if you, me and you go and talk to a client, yeah. they'll listen to you more than me. Yeah. Yeah? That's because they will see more potential a responsiveness, a vitality in you than in me. Yeah. So there are those many opportunities that you okay. have. Mm -hmm. So sectors mm -hmm. and also what services can you provide mm -hmm. within Good. certain sectors. All right. Yeah. And lastly, a lot of also concerns, especially when it comes to hiring young people. Mm -hmm. But I've seen you work a lot mm -hmm. with young people. You are telling me, you and Steve, you are the oldest in yes. you in yes. this farm. Yes. Do you find them troublesome? And how do you handle them? Okay. <laughs> it's it, it you know that is a, a very what is it called it's, uh, a, it's, a, it's a very interesting question yeah because one is that uh they are very interesting characters mm. and i think what has helped me is that i'm a parent to the young who are also making their own money mm. you just need to understand them they are very different from us who, who are used to routine routine like them to call the routine nini. for them they're more resort oriented mm -hmm. these are the deliverables meet them mm. yeah at your own time, at your own, but you know we have targets. Mm. So you need to marry their mentality and their concept into the work. Mm. Secondly, they like to be challenged. Yeah? We, our generation, liked to be led. Mm. Them, they like to lead. So you give them the leeway to lead. They are very creative if you trust them. But we were, we were the type that were very hands-on. Mm. And therefore, our, our, the way we grew up, we grew up waiting to be told. Yes. Yeah? Waiting to be led. Mm. Then they've grown with internet. They've grown with solving problems. They've grown with seeing how things are moving, dynamism, you know, dynamic. So you give them that ability. So I, don't, I just tell them what I want. Can we achieve 500 tons? Can we achieve uh, 12 tons next week, next season? Mm. Per week, yes. mm -hmm. that's the only question I ask. Good. They will tell me yes and the how, mm. and then you leave them to lead the process of the how. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Leave them to lead the process of, of the, the how, because they like to use their. Yes. Yeah. We are proud of you, young people. You so yeah, much. guys, one more time. That's Salimo for Agriculture Made a Yes. Yeah, her, you can find her on the details on the screen. Yes. And they can also book farm tours. Karibu. Unaleta watu. Wekeni number ndio yu on the screen. Reserve your place for it. Yes. Reserve your place for it. Ah, yeah. But mom, you look very happy. Yeah. Of course, your skin is glowing. <laughs> you know you are. You are very, yeah, so they say, you know, behind yeah. every successful man yes. is a woman. Yes. But here also we are seeing a case of behind a successful woman, yes. there is a man. Yes. So family support iko aji. Family support iko sawa kabisa. Mpoa anasemanga. <laughs> You are permanent. <laughs> and <I> say, <laughs> he's um he's uh, been also grown up in a family of uh, agriculture, yeah. an agriculture family, uh -huh. uh, doing a lot of coffee yes. and tea. Actually, uh, Gorongo tea. If mm. you know about Ken Fresh, yes. that's uh, our brand. Oh. Our brand. So they oh. we grow coffee, mm -hmm. we grow tea, wow. and we have a brand in the in the in the supermarkets. Okay. Now this for them was new, and uh, my husband gave me. The leeway to try. Uh -huh. He has a lot of confidence in me and a lot of a lot of faith. So he told me, "You want to do it? Uh, I'm already overwhelmed in uh, everything else. Go and try it." And I can tell you for sure, 
this is something that he's really admired. Mm. The, um, the, the, the abil- you know, the, it's given us exactly what we expected without a lot of deviation. Other than that Swara story and mm. uh, the seedlings that we thought we were Juwaji, you can set our own nursery. Yes. Everything else has almost gone as per plan. So he has a lot of confidence in this mm-hmm. and he supports us 100%. Okay. My daughter and my son, my daughter has established her own, her own nas- uh, plantation. Yes. Actually, there's a block we call Block B that yeah. belongs to Natalie. Okay. And Moses is also a big time herbs farmer. Wow. So, and he's the one in charge of our strategy. Yes. And he's our director in charge of strategy. Mm-hmm. Natalie is working with the finance. Is a, she's a director with the finance team mm-hmm. because she's very good with numbers. So the whole family is involved. I am the doer and I'm the one who likes talking. So most of the times you just see Kala Grace because I'm the one who likes it is a gift. It is a beautiful gift. It's a gift. It's a gift. That you're able to tell stories. Uh, you know, this is not story a jamba, but it's a story. Natali, you may have a mom. Story a jamba. Yes. So I'm the I'm the one who has the the skill to connect to yeah. markets. I yeah. I do a lot of market linkages uh-huh. um, because of my background structuring partnerships. Yes. Uh, so I'm usually in the forefront, but when you see me, yeah. you're seeing the whole family. Beautiful. Yes. So you are representing now the yes. whole yes, Karakuta. Exactly. Karakuta. You've done amazing. You yes. guys have done an amazing job. And what, my team. Uh, you yes. and your amazing team. Yes. Well, what legacy do you want to leave behind as Grace? Yes, as Grace. Wow, that's an interesting <laughs> one. Yeah. You know, when we were setting up avocados, there was all that story you're hearing of the, is it the Quero? What I want to show is that you can actually do something, be very consistent and believe in it, and then you will get the results that you want. Mm. It does not matter whether you think it will be flooded or not, because we believe in differentiation. There's a reason why people differentiate. We are in this and it's going to succeed. I am very proud that I was able to stick to it, you know, stick to it to the point that year on year we've been expanding the orchards. That's what, especially to the kids, I want to teach them that we've set it up, we've been consistent, and we've succeeded. So something can happen when you, you believe in it. Mm. That's what I want to see. Mm-hmm. Secondly, there's something that is, I'm very passionate about. I can already see how the smallholder farmer is going to unfold. But I, can, I already have the formula how the small farmer is going to remain relevant. Mm. If you go to Mexico, you go to Peru, you go to Colombia, it's more, it's large-scale farmers who play. In fact, you may find Mexico is only four or five guys. That's why you hear their cartels, their what. But the dynamic in Africa or in Kenya, who is leading in the avocado sector, is that we've been, it's been a sector that has been grown by the smallholder mm-hmm. farmer. Does that mean that it will be relevant? They shouldn't be. In KTDA, it's already worked where smallholder farmers have been held relevant because of the structures that yeah. put around them. Yeah. So even in the avocado sector, if we don't handhold the smallholder farmer in the very near future, not so far away, they could remain irrelevant, but they don't have to be. So that's another legacy that I want to mm. make sure I create, that especially within my area, this area of Kiambu, smallholder farmers will be talking about someone who actually helped them access a market and made their lives sustainable, made their livelihoods better mm. because they were not irrelevant. Good. They they never lost it, yeah? Because they produced like the large scale farmers. They came together like large scale farmers. They entered the market like large scale farmers. Mm. They attained the standards like large scale farmers. We are going to give them even standards, global gap mm. as, as smallholder farmers. Beautiful. They will be accessing the markets, not necessarily as Karakuta. Even if they are there is Karakuta, that is the route to market is Karakuta, the buyer knows it is Karakuta, but Lynn's farm. Good. Mom, anything else you feel like we left that you've not addressed? <laughs> I enjoy what I do. Uh, I enjoy it so much. Uh-huh. I think that's what keeps me young. That's what keeps you young. So what do you do yeah. for fun? I go out with my friends. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> we, we listen to good music. Uh-huh. We play golf. Uh, yes. Good. Yeah. Ah, it's yeah. nice. Yeah. You, you, are, yeah. you are beautiful. You know, thank you, you are thank beautiful. You, thank you. Yeah. I appreciate you. 
Thank for you taking, very much. I know this was not easy yeah. for you to dedicate. We spent here almost almost seven hours now. Almost yes. seven hours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've been with you for almost seven hours no, now. No, no. I, I, I really appreciate sharing yeah. knowledge. Yes. Because I tell people, when you come to my farm, I'll tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly. Good. You go and make your decision. Yeah. Because yeah. we suffered so much because there was no knowledge. And I always wonder, why do people withhold information? Mm. No. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate that a lot of time for mm. you to mm. spare yeah. and just have this beautiful conversation yes. with us. And yes. I hope our people have also learned. Yes. So, yes. Ambia watu wangu bye. Asante ni sana. Thank you very much. <laughs> eh. <laughs> Thank you. We really feel honored for eh. you to use us as a vehicle to share information. Yes. We are an open book. We say too much. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm told you talk too much, and I say, "Kwani?" Mudomo ni yadi. But it's because we are believers of um, making, growing together. Yes. We are strong believers of that. Mm. I don't want to be in a situation where I'm growing avocados. I have established a park house, and I can't collect from my neighbors there. Why do I have to go to Tanzania? Yes. Why do I have why, to? Why do you That's, have to? Gatondo is in the center of avocado production. That's why we are having our pack house here. Mm. And we want to make sure that people are also bringing here. Otherwise, they will start resenting you, mm. you know? Yeah, so that's our... We, be, we are strong believers of helping people grow with us. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you, yeah. ma'am. I mean, I wish you all the very thank best. Thank you. Blessings upon blessings. Yeah. And you were so amazing to talk to. <laughs> thank you. Like, I thank just felt you. like I was talking to my long-lost <laughs> friend. We were catching up. So that was easy. Uh -huh. You know, and for you guys at home, yeah. avocado na cheza na yo ivi. Msijali jaiva. You know, for you guys back at home, I, I honestly hope you've learned as I said earlier, always wanted to have this conversation on Haas avocados and I found just the perfect person to have this conversation with. So on the comment section, do leave me your take home. What have you learned? Especially if you are considering moving into this sector, this video is really, really good for you. A lot of knowledge shared, a lot of information shared. So please uh, watch it, take notes. You know what we do here on Inspire Global. We are big on taking notes and just learning and as i keep saying no shame in hard work please be proud of your hustle be proud people are going to question you people are going to ask are you sure but most importantly if you have that vision you're the only person who has that vision but of course, you know, I have to say thank you to the people who make it possible for us to have this conversation. Our beautiful partners who just, just like associating with us. And I love the feedback that you always give us on our partners. That's our opt event for today and tap tap. And I say, if you are looking into owning a land in this place, why don't you try our people at opt event? They have a very beautiful place in Vipingo. Someone actually told me, Lynn, Vipingo is not in Malindi. And I actually checked it up and I saw it's quite a distance uh, Iko Hapo Vipingo four kilometers away from the Indian Ocean. Get yourself a piece of land at Ocean View Ridge. Call our team at Optiven. They will sort you guys and they have many lands around so you don't always have to settle for that one. Kamayoi Kombali and of course to the people in diaspora I want to send money to your loved ones back at home. Use a tap tap. It's a money sending app that allows you to send money to your loved ones here back at home through M-Pesa or a bank account and you can always download it on your phone and use my promo code LEAN on your first off transaction and get 10% uh, cash back on the details on your screen. Asante Nisana to my people at TapTap Tap, and not forgetting my incredible team, the ones I get to do this with. Today we are here with Muga, Skola, Edwin, Joshua and of course super producer Mwenyewe Salimo for putting this episode together remember to check out her company she is having i love when i see young people going out there and chasing their dreams so connect with her the number is on the screen for any farm tours and i'm sure you can check out her page for more details and who else have, have i forgotten oh you guys thank you for watching your incredible one million subscribers here we come so shukran sana continue supporting our work continue giving us that beautiful feedback positive criticism always appreciated and I hope we can continue bringing you guys inspirational stories 
one day at a time watu wangu wa Australia see you guys next month continue submitting your stories in for at lnn.digital tupatane wapi tupatane Australia na wapenda me i'm about to go enjoy my avocados na ile ugali na joy ilipikwa lunch na mtu wetu Lilian so me i'm out si tuonane mam next time okay. sawa sawa Don't trust the process one day your life is gonna change keep on believing.